You already know the big differences between the US and Germany, like football and foosball, bread and brot, cars and autos. But what are five tiny insignificant differences you never noticed before and we're gonna tell you about today? Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel. I am Donnie. And I'm Aubrey. And we are two Americans currently living in Germany and sharing all of our experiences living and traveling throughout Europe. When you travel to another country, you often will notice huge differences that are obvious to everybody and are partly what makes traveling fun as you discover unique aspects of other cultures. But when you move and live in a foreign country, you eventually move on from those large and obvious differences and start to notice minute differences which causes you to question everything you thought were just facts of life. And that is exactly what we are going to talk about today in our video. Five tiny funny discrepancies between German and American expectancies. That was good. We are from a small state in the southern U.S. called Oklahoma and now live in the southwestern German state of Rhineland Falls. We have traveled to a lot of other regions of these two countries, but some of these differences may be more specific to our experiences and what we have seen in these two places. If you have different experiences or know of something else that is different based on where you are from, be sure to let us know in the comments. Also, if you are from a different country than these two, be sure to let us know what the things we talk about are like in your country so we can all learn from each other from around the world. We are going to start with a difference that shares the similarity that the name for it is famously difficult for non-native speakers to say in both languages. If you haven't guessed it, it is our squirrels, or in German, Eichhörnchen. Yes, our little furry tree rodents go by words that are equally hard for people from both countries to pronounce the translation of, but look very different in both countries. Because everywhere we have lived, squirrels are very common, it is one of the first things that made us feel like we were really in a foreign country when we technically saw the same animal running around over here, but they look completely different than what we were used to. So let's do a little test. Close your eyes, and when I say the word squirrel, what image pops in your head? If you are German, did you think of this? And if you are American, did you think of these guys? Squirrels are definitely something that vary regionally, and in the US, there are five different types of squirrels, unlike in Germany, where there are three different types. But what we were mainly used to seeing in our backyards in Oklahoma was the large fox squirrel, measuring in at 10 to 15 inches and weighing up to a pound. They have small, round ears, brown, gray, and yellowish coloring, and love stealing seeds from our bird feeders. In our minds, when we think of a squirrel, this is what we see. Then we came to Germany and saw for the first time these little small red squirrels with pointy, hairy ears called European red squirrels. These squirrels are a little bit smaller than the ones we are used to, measuring in at around eight to nine inches and weighing around 12 ounces. Don't let their name fool you though, because European red squirrels don't actually always have to be red. For example, they can also be black or gray. Now when we hear the word squirrel, we have confusing images in our heads of what they look like. This next difference is something that we're going to need a little bit of audience participation. In a previous differences video, we talked about how we were shocked to learn that diagonal stripes on ties in the US typically go from the right shoulder down to the left hip and European tie diagonals go the opposite way from your left shoulder to your right hip. And that was largely confirmed when you guys ran to your closets and commented that it was widely accurate. Now we want you to run to your closets and tell us what side of your jacket the zipper pool is on and where you are from. I bought a zip up jacket from a store here in Germany and every time I try to zip it up, I reach for the right side of the jacket for the pool, but I don't find it there because it is on the left side. I'm sure that we all know that in both Europe and the US, men's buttons on shirts are predominantly on the right side and women's buttons are predominantly on the left side. Donnie once bought a blouse, not realizing it was a woman's shirt until his dad pointed out the buttons were on the wrong side. So he's a little more weary 
about this issue because he doesn't want to run into a repeated embarrassing moment. Then when he realized his jacket zipper was on the left side, he started to have flashbacks to the blouse he accidentally bought. So we verified his jacket was a men's jacket and then did some research. What we found is that typically when it comes to zippers, there is no set side the zipper is put on. We checked websites of American and German clothing brands and found that both men's and women's jackets have zippers seemingly randomly assigned to a side. This was confirmed by GQ when they were asked this question once and they responded that there are no rules when it comes to zippers like there are for buttons. However, we did find that it seems designers for American brands typically will put the zipper on the right side for men and on the left for women, just like the buttons. Whereas European designers tend to put the zipper pool on the left for both men and women. We even found an article titled The European Zipper in which the author claims that most European zippers, particularly on military clothing, will have the zipper pool on the left side. So is this actually a difference or not? We need you to help us find out. Leave a comment on what side your zipper pool is on your jacket and whether they are European brands or American. Real quick, we wanted to take a moment and just thank you so much for watching this video. This video is not sponsored by anybody, but you guys watching it is what is supporting us to be able to keep bringing you these videos. A comment, sharing this video, a like, and a subscribe helps us out way more than you know. But if you have enjoyed it and want to support us in other ways, we have our Patreon linked in the description and you can check it out. There you'll find some behind the scenes or never before seen bloopers for our patrons and ways that you can support our work. We very very much appreciate the help and you interacting with us so that we can keep bringing you more content. Now, let's get back to the video. While we have you participating, let's get your input on another issue that was raised in the comments on another one of our videos where we tried every Kinder chocolate bar. Watch this clip and tell us if you notice something weird. If we run into a situation where neither of us agree, then a winner will be determined by a sudden death Stein, Papier und Schirr match. Yes, we had some German viewers comment that it is not Stein, Papier und Schirr, but rather the order should be Schirr, Stein, Papier. But then again, some said that it is Papier, Stein, Shira, and even some said Stein, Shira, Papier. In the US, there is also the same debate where different parts of the country say rock, paper, scissors, scissors, paper, rock, paper, rock, scissors, etc. But for sure, the correct way for both countries has been determined by the world authority on this game called the World Rock, Paper, Scissors Association. They host the World Rock, Paper, Scissors Championships, the European Rock, Paper, Scissors Championships, and the United States Rock, Paper, Scissors Championships. So you may be asking, well, what is the difference then between the US and Germany? Well, when we were reading the names Germans were arguing was the correct way to call it, a lot of people commented alternative names they actually use more frequently that we had never heard of. Names like click, clack, cluck, or flea, fla, flu, but the German alternate to rock, paper, scissors that seemed most common in our comments and online is schnick, schnack, schnook. In the US, an alternative name we are familiar with but never personally use is Rochambeau. The name Rochambeau supposedly was developed in Northern California and is most popular on the West Coast. Besides Rochambeau and rock, paper, scissors, we have never heard other names for it and we couldn't find other alternatives online in the US, unlike in Germany, where it seems like there are almost countless alternative alliterations to name this game. So let us know in the comments what you call this rock, paper, scissors. In Germany, when you are driving and approach an intersection with traffic lights, you will notice a couple of things that are different about them when compared to those in the US. You will notice the first difference after you stop at a red light and are looking for the traffic lights to know when to go again. In the US, we are used to looking straight ahead at a comfortable slight angle upwards where you can very easily see when the light changes to green because they are located above the street on the other side of the intersection. However, in Germany, if you look in the same spot, you will just see the back of a traffic light. Instead, what you must do to see your signal is either crane your neck at a very uncomfortable angle upwards to try and see the lights directly above you, or sometimes the signal is located on the side of the road at a more comfortable height. 
When we first moved here, we thought we were driving wrong because we always ended up right underneath the lights and we couldn't really see them. So we thought maybe we should just stop a little earlier so we aren't directly underneath them. But clearly other people do that and mess up the flow of traffic because there are often signs telling you to pull all the way up to the stop line, thus placing you right underneath where you can't see the signal. Eventually we realized we are in fact stopping in the correct spot. You just have to live with the next train at every traffic light. So honestly, I like this German way the best, but Donnie prefers the American way, which isn't even strictly American at all because this is the way it is also done in places like the UK and Australia. Some of the reasons why it is done this way in Germany include that lights across the intersection tends to lead to people stopping across the stop line and hindering the crosswalk or bike lanes. Sometimes people will also watch the other lights in the cross traffic lanes to change to red so that they can get a jump start on their green light rather than waiting for their light like they're supposed to. This this is all avoided when a light is situated right above the stop line because you cannot cross it or else you will not be able to see the light. I think this also makes you more aware of pedestrians crossing. This all could lead you down a rabbit hole of trying to figure out what the best way is. At the end of the day, they're just different approaches and ways to get the job done. But the US is more comfortable. This is not the only difference at a traffic light though. The other big difference is the traffic light sequence. What I mean by traffic light sequence is the pattern the colors change between red, yellow, and green. In both Germany and the US, when you're approaching a green light, it might turn yellow to warn you that it is about to turn red. And in both Germany and the US, this means to quickly accelerate and speed through the light. Well, it doesn't actually mean that in either country, but that's what people tend to do, unfortunately. However, the difference is that in the US, you only have the yellow light when the light is changing from green to red. From red, the light will simply go straight to green, whereas in Germany, the light will go from red, briefly also turn yellow, then turn just green. This is helpful to those driving manuals to be able to know the light is about to turn green and for them to go ahead and get into gear so that when it turns green, they are ready to go. Something we have talked about in other videos before is that manual cars are much more common in Germany than in the US. In the US, 96% of cars driven are automatics according to Reader's Digest in 2020. According to an article by DW in 2019, only 47.5% of cars leaving the production line in Germany were automatics. Therefore, this light sequence still has its benefits in Germany where so many people have to get into gear to start driving. However, we of course as Americans drive an automatic but I still personally prefer the German light sequence. I like that little bit of a heads up that we are about to go so even I can get prepared. Not that there is much preparation needed with an automatic though. As the world becomes more and more globalized, you sometimes can travel between Europe and America and feel like you never left and arrived in a foreign country. Finding these differences is a fun way for us to learn to appreciate our uniqueness and different world views. There doesn't always have to be a right or wrong, but just simply different ways of achieving the same end goal that are fun to learn about. Let us know in the comments of other fun differences you know of, and be sure to check out our channel for many more of these types of videos. If you enjoyed this video, please let us know by hitting that like and subscribe button, and we will see you in our next video. Cheers. You already know the big difference between the US and Germany. You right. already know the big differences between the US oh, and Germany. I'm sorry, I moved. Mm, thinking about it. And European, and European. Now we want to run, now we want you to run Whereas European desire, whereas European designers. But at the end of the day, we're just, but at the end of the day, they are just different. At the end of the day, they're just different. There doesn't always have to be a right or a wrong, but just simply different. Can I start over? I can't see anything.